Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amy. Today, I wanted to share with you some of my current favorites, which include some luxury, of course, uh, some of my everyday go-to products, and some new discoveries that I cannot rave enough about. Of course, since the pandemic year, face masks has become more relevant than ever, even more than before when it was just used for pollution or just personal hygiene, but now they are pretty much essentials. I wanna thank Erinem for sponsoring this part of the video. As you can see, they are open. I have started using them so that I can give you a first impression review, but I will put clips of myself unboxing these in the same outfit that I'm wearing right now. I have already heard about this company in the past because I do follow quite a few channels, uh, especially a few that are from Hong Kong. If you guys don't already know, in Hong Kong and Asia, they have been wearing face masks for a long, long time, well before the pandemic started, just for air pollution, allergies. One of the channels that I follow, they pretty much do all technical reviews of face masks. I saw them talk about this brand, so they know what they're talking about when it comes to face masks. I am featuring right here both their light air mask and their Urban Air Mask 2.0. They are designed in Sweden and built around three foundations protection, comfort, and design. Let's go over the light air mask package together. It comes with one reusable and washable mask skin, two replaceable light air filters with shapeable memory foam, and one head clip. These masks have a washable skin with a replaceable filter on the inside, which is designed to be more environmentally friendly than disposable masks. It is available in different colors in four different sizes to fit kids and adults alike. And I have right here the size medium. I should mention that the mask skin, the outside layer, is treated with Polygene, a Swedish fabric treatment that stops the growth of odor-causing bacteria to help it stay fresh and odor free for a long time. I'll go over the specs of the filters themselves in a moment. The Aranem Urban Air Mask 2.0 is designed to be the most advanced air pollution mask on the market. All the features and the details are engineered at their head office in Stockholm, Sweden. The mask is available in several different colors limited collaborations as well as in four different sizes. Mine is in the size small. It comes with one reusable washable mask skin with adjustable ear loops, and it is also made with the same antibacterial polygene treated fabric. It also has two replaceable Urban Air 2.0 filters, dual valve exhalation system, optional valve stoppers, an adjustable head strap, as well as a travel pouch to store your mask when it's not in use. So one of the main difference of the Urban Air Mask 2.0 and the Light Air Mask is that this one has the dual exhalation valve ventilation system. When you exhale, the two valves allows the warm and moist air that you exhale as well as CO2 to be ventilated out. When you inhale, the valves are blocked, making sure that the inhaled air travels through the mask filter themselves. However, you can also use the exhalation valve stoppers instead when you want to disable the ventilation function. The only difference is that it has additional rings on the inside which closes the blue silicone discs on the valve and thereby disabling the ventilation function. Both of these masks come with certified filter technology and they are replaceable like I mentioned earlier. Each filter will last up to 100 hours of wear. Every time you breathe, air passes through five layers of the filter media before it even reaches your lungs. I should also mention that the multi-layer technology is also tested at the RISE R&D Center in Sweden, showing a 98% protection rate against particles down to a size of 0.3 micrometers and 99.99 percent against submicron, which are fine particulate matters. So basically these filters are equivalent to a certified KN95 or the similar industrial N95 mask or N95 respirator. Designed with a 3D memory foam and adjustable nose clip on the filters, which helps with anti-fogging when wearing glasses. As you can see, there's the active carbon layer, which reduces gas and odor. The first electron charge layer, which filters out 
pollen and other allergens. The second electron charge layer filters out even smaller particulate matter such as dust and bacteria. Both provide an equivalent of an N95 protection, but obviously these are reusable masks, so do not use it in a medical setting, meaning that do not expect these to replace your medical graded masks. Uh, these are more for urban use, so for everyday regular people use, uh, for more protection and for style. The main, main difference is that these also have a valve ventilation system you can use the regular valve or you can use the valve stoppers and the valve stoppers look exactly the same except it has those little extra nubs on the back and my first impression of it is that it is still true to size except that maybe you might want to size up if you're right on the border of the sizing i would say if you want to try this one then maybe consider sizing up and really try to measure the length of your face as well just to be sure with the urban air mask too i love that it comes with a very functional head strap you can use it to tighten up to relieve your ear pressure which works really well and i love that this little part here with the silicone does help with not sliding down when you're not wearing your mask to so just wear it around your neck so that's perfect for it and plus the little travel pouch is just a bonus. The ventilation system is probably useful for when you wear the mask for very long hours, which typically doesn't happen to me because I don't really stay out too long. So for me, the ventilation system is a little bit irrelevant, but I could definitely see that pre-COVID when people use these masks, especially in Asia with a lot of pollution, that you would just want the ventilation system anyway because whenever you go out, you're wearing a mask anyway. And so it will prevent from too much of the moisture build up, even though it will happen nevertheless. But I would assume that these will help with that. Uh, except that with COVID, I would definitely use the stoppers. Uh, I'm sure that pre-COVID, it would have been just fine to use these, the regular valves. Maneuver it to fit the contour of your nose. And this is memory foam, so it will also conform to the shape of your nose. So let me just put this on. So as you can see, in the front, nothing. On the side, it goes just a little bit under my chin. And just put it on like that. So you just adjust the nose clip if you want. But like I said, it's memory foam. And it covers a little bit of my chin. And if you want, you can use this thing on the back, but I don't bother. And yeah, this is how it looks on me. Out of the two masks, I would say that this is my favorite one. I just like how simple it is. I also love that it's in the color pink. I love the fact that it's concave design. It doesn't touch your mouth so much, unless you're just talking a lot and moving your mouth a lot and your jaw a lot. But aside from that, I feel like of the two, I definitely prefer this. For someone who's not always needing a mask because I just stay home and if I do go out, it's for a short time anyway, just for essential errands. I'd probably go for the light air mask just for simple design, uh, no fuss type of ear loops, uh, very easy installation, no valves required, and really, really cute and stylish and seems to be more true to size. I would just go with this one. They're not really meant to be replaced your medical grade mask, obviously. In other words, they are made to be really cool, everyday face covering that gives you extra protection compared to your regular, just non-surgical masks. If you're interested in either of these masks, I will link in the description box right below this video, a link to purchase them, as well as my coupon code for you to save 10% at checkout. You might recognize some of these products because I have used Use them in a Q&A where I got ready with you and I was giving my first impression, very first impression of uh, this brand right here, Merit. This has been what I've been using ever since that video uh, to get ready for filming. So all the videos after that that you see me on camera, these are what I use. Like I mentioned in that video, these two are absolute, absolute holy grail 
replacement of both my foundation and concealer products. So as of right now, all I'm wearing is this on my face and only on the blemish or the discoloration areas. I have no foundation whatsoever on my face. This is my real skin, which is why I love, love, love this line so much. It is, by the way, a Sephora clean line. This is their Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. So you basically use this as a two-in-one step and it's very, very, very creamy. It blends beautifully with your own skin, especially if you can choose it in your own color, even better. I just happen to blend the two colors to make it more matching my own skin tone because of inventory. But otherwise, um, this has become my new holy grail. I highly recommend it to anybody who is into sort of makeup but no makeup look. There's a total of 3.7 grams left. Uh, I, I mean, I, I hardly even put a dent on this. It's just so, so beautiful. So let me just do a swatch right here to just show you how creamy it really is. It just swipes really, really, really beautiful. Sorry, uh, excuse my dry skin on my hands, uh, but it's just really, really creamy, really amazing. Goes on like butter and it blends beautifully. Sometimes I do use my fingers to blend. As you can see, it just kind of blends in uh, my skin. And I would say this color is definitely closer to my skin tone. Uh, but for the perimeter of my face where I get more tan than, but even for this one, as you can see, I kind of blended it in. So around the perimeter of my face, it works out to be perfectly fine. Uh, so I do use my fingers to blend as a second layer, just when I want to put more coverage. But for the first coverage, I just use this brush. This is actually a foundation brush from Shiseido and it's just a flat sort of slightly angled uh, kind of compact little brush. It's very, very soft. This little guy is perfect to blend in uh, this product right here. So let me just do it right here. You just tap, 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 and it just literally blends in and gives this really beautiful finish. It, I just, yeah, it just really evens out everything, even my dry skin is looking a little bit better. And if you watch every single of my videos, you would know that I've been suffering a little bit of a acne breakout on my forehead. It has gone down a lot. I have been trying a number of different things and also thank you all for your suggestions. It's been calming down so much more. So right now it's not so bad anymore. Uh, you can still see tiny, tiny, like maybe a few tiny little bumps that are still clogged. Uh, right here uh, but it's getting so much better and with this I have to say with this product it doesn't aggravate it it stays put throughout the night it doesn't become too oily and uh, it also doesn't aggravate my my acne situation and I I'm just so I'm just so glad that I'm finding so many holy grail new favorite products that are also making my life easier. For sure, the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick are new holy grail, must have, and I will recommend it to anybody to try it. Um, but this one as well is a new holy grail. I have will have to repurchase this once this is used up, um, but I think it will take a while. So this is there, let me just give you the right name their volumizing pomade brow and it is absolutely stunning i mean just look first of all their packaging is top notch just look at the beautiful metal packaging um it is a brow little kind of mascara looking um brush but it's a pomade that is not waxy and yet stays put. So this is what I have on my brows ever since I discovered this product. Uh, this is what I've been using, just one go on both brows. And it works out so perfectly. So if you already have sort of full brows-ish, or if you have enough brow hair already, but they're just a little bit uneven in terms of colors, this is your answer. You, 
I don't use a stencil anymore. I don't use the powder anymore. I've just been using this because not only is this even more natural than my look before, uh, than using powder and a stencil. This one, you basically just brush on to the shape of your brow. So I usually start off to the part to the top part of this brow and then I do the top part of this brow and then I just kind of fill in both as I go. And it's perfect. Plus I have this brown color which is not too too harsh. It kind of just blends into the, to my darker hair and it makes everything look a little bit more seamless but it looks like my real brows. It's not, it's not, it doesn't look like I'm drawing on brows, which is absolutely uh, what I love about minimal makeup and natural looking makeup without, you know, that still looks very put together. So this somehow, the formula, the color, the way the brush is designed, everything just like the, um, the application, uh, the color, everything is just amazing. Highly, highly recommend their brow pomade. These two would have to be my second favorite of the entire line. So they have their mascara. They only have the one in black color as well as their lip oil. This one is a fiber mascara. It's called the lengthening mascara. So anyway, they only have the one anyway. And I like it. I've always just used fiber mascaras in the past. However, the one that I use is from L'Oreal and it is made with some harsh chemicals that I'm not a fan of. Therefore, I am happy with this one because this one is a natural product, is free of parabens and all, those, all the known toxins, which is why I have been a fan of this. The formula is good, enough lengthening and enough volume for sure on its own. And I do the top and the bottom of uh, my lashes. So as you can see, the bottom of my lash, I do have um, a little bit of mascara on. And usually I just do the top first and then I do the bottom in the same swipe. So if you're into fiber mascara, you would probably know what I mean. Some are drier than others. This one stays in a nice kind of middle wet but not too wet consistency which I really like but of course the first time that you use it it will be a little bit wetter in terms of fallout this does have a little bit towards the end of the day but it's not terrible and it's not irritating because it is a clean product I don't mind that there is a little bit of fallout and uh, yeah I, I would say that this is quite a decent product I would still recommend it uh, just because it's a clean product and it's a clean mascara that actually works so uh, of course you guys also know that I do use my uh, magnetic lashes on top of my <laughs> mascaras the lip oils they have several different colors I have mine in pink beet this is not the color that I'm wearing right now but I just want to say a shout out to this product anyway because as an everyday lip product that really moisturizes and that also gives you that really uh, shiny and really hydrated look. You cannot go wrong with this. It's unscented. I think this is unscented also. Let me see. Yeah, it's it's really, it's so pleasant. It, if anything, there's like a very bright scent. It's kind of unscented to me because I don't really like scented products, uh, especially on, on makeup products. Sometimes they subside quite quickly so I get used to it and it's fine but this is just a beautiful beautiful um, everyday uh, very pretty everyday no makeup makeup look type of color super hydrating this is pretty much five out of their seven products um, that I really really like and would recommend so this is their highlighter I have it in the color Kava and this is a cream highlighter and a little bit goes a long way. I don't typically use a highlighter, but if you do and you like a cream highlighter, this is really, really pretty. So I don't know if I can just do a little swipe here. Um, I don't really swipe it with the, I don't really swipe it with the stick. I just use my fingers and I just grab a little bit. But as you can see, it's very, very natural and it gives you that very, very uh, beautiful sheen uh, and a natural glow. And the reason why I don't use highlighters is just because I do have these freckle things and it just kind of exasperate them a little bit too much. Um, if I use a highlighter, I would usually use it maybe a little bit on the bridge of my nose and just under the brow bone a little bit, but not on a daily basis. This is the lipstick that I've been wearing since I received it. 
and um, this is a very bougie lipstick. So it's from Hermes and it does come with a little pouch which is super cute and very protective of the beautiful interior. I want to thank again this to the subby that sent me this beautiful lipstick. I've been using it since. So thank you so much. Um, the packaging, the color, this is what I've been using. It's just amazing and I even have kind of like matching nail color which I'll talk about in a moment. So in terms of Hermes lipstick, if I can just uh, give a quick review, color-wise, color payoff everything, and the beauty, the, the originality and the beauty of the color, just spectacular. The satin finish is nice. It does have those micro particles, so the micro pearl particles. In terms of formula, I think you've heard it multiple times, Hermes lipsticks are not the best formula out there, and after trying this, I can concur. Um, it's just not groundbreaking. You cannot go wrong if you just love the packaging and if you love the color. Just the formula itself, um, even though it is a satin finish, which would normally be a bit more moisturizing, which I don't find it to be, uh, at the end of the night, I do feel that my lips do dry out. I have been getting a lot of questions about my nail color. It's a very bright red that comes across as pink neon almost. And it's very, very, very pretty. So this nail polish color is from Nail Addict and it's called Electric Red. So this is the one that I have been wearing that you guys have been obsessing about. So just to give a very quick review of Nail Addict, they did send me their PR package which included their mini UV LED lamp. So it is a gel polish, so you would need to cure it. So this little mini lamp is super handy, similar to um, those really sort of portable ones that I've used in the past. They just look like that and you just plug it in via USB. They sent me a total of three colors. So I have right here the electric red. I also have their white, uh, white addict and cutie pie. These are really cute as well, but you guys know I'm a big, big lover of red. So of course I had to do the red first. They also sent me their base coat, the remover and the no wipe top coat. And I have to shout out to uh, the no wipe top coat because this means that you don't have to use alcohol to remove that film layer at the end, at the very last step. After trying this no wipe top coat, I highly recommend that you just get the no wipe top coat from now on. Just much, much better than having to wipe your fingers uh, at the end. And in terms of formula, base coat and top coat are on the thinner side, which is exactly what you would want. Uh, so it's great and very easy to put on. Um, the color itself is on the thicker side, which is also amazing because this is just one coat. As you can see, it's quite opaque. It is pretty much true to their color on the top cap. So formula-wise, very, very nice. I should mention that Nail Addict is a cruelty-free and nine-free company. So all their products are very, very clean, which is what I like, um, so I really appreciate that. And um, as far as color payoff, formula, um, ease of application, I would say A+, really, really good. So highly recommend it, I'll link it down below. Obviously, I could not not mention my newest fine jewelry that I have been obsessing about for the past at least month, month and a half now. My favorite piece of all time is definitely and I would repurchase it if, you know, if uh, if I had to, which has to be my Cartier Love bracelet. I have mine in the small size, so the thinner version in rose gold, and I am wearing a size 15 for your reference. I will link my reveal video and also first impression video right here. In that video, you'll see all my reasoning behind picking these pieces, um, but like I said, I have been wearing these ever since I got them, uh, since early April. So it's been over a month now and I cannot recommend it more highly. Um, at least for myself, I'm just glad that I finally took the plunge because this has to be the most worth it piece I've ever gotten in terms of uh, my luxury purchasing history. Even compared to bags, I would say I wish I... Mm, 
actually it's not true but it doesn't matter it's just it's just a beautiful beautiful piece it's definitely worth it i definitely am happy finally that i found exactly what i wanted um the look that i wanted the fit that i wanted um and there's definitely more <laughs> more luxury bracelets to come in the future but for now as a very first introductory piece i'm very very happy with the love bracelet uh, let me know down below what kind of questions you have for me because I want to do a review, um, you know, more than just first impression. I definitely want to do a more in-depth review of this piece. So uh, obviously I already have some thoughts, but if you have any specific questions, let me know down below. Of course, I also love these rings too. They are fabulous and just amazing. These two pieces have been just... Oh, absolute favorite. So a little heavy. Obviously, I have right here my Avalon blanket. I do use it. It's not just for decoration. I use it quite often, actually. I do use a silk blanket, which is also quite thin, but silk blankets have the, I'm sure you already know, the properties of keeping you cool or keeping you warm when needed. Uh, whereas this is cashmere and wool, which is just all about warmth. I just fold it into and then I put it all um, basically across my body on top of my existing blanket and it has worked like a charm for the very very cold days because I did get this in March and it was still quite cold in March and I just love the feeling of it so yeah I know that a lot of people buy these as decoration pieces but I actually use mine and I use it so often that it has already been worth every single penny I have been told that they pill um, perhaps but I think the way that I use it it's not going to be too bad if anything um, you know it's not being abused or anything I just use it on top of my own blanket and so the wear and tear is very minimal and I am using it every day which makes it so worth it this scarf is also a big big favorite it's kind of a surprise purchase when I brought it home because um, I didn't anticipate them having this print in fact I you know love a lot of their prints but I love that this one is quite simple it's their Shendonk design aside from their leather goods I think it's probably their most popular department because uh, they always run out of you know the most popular patterns and for a good reason because these are very well priced especially if you're into very plain outfits these scarves just adds um, an additional level of elegance and put togetherness. My favorite bag of late is my trendy CC and I'm so happy that I get to say that because like I said before I haven't worn this bag in a long time since I bought it just because I bought it right around when the lockdown was happening because of the pandemic year and because I've been staying home and just having nowhere to go uh, I just refrained from using my more delicate bags and this one being a lambskin bag I just have been scared to use it but since 2021 I just figured I have to use my things and plus it was the winter time so I needed a bigger bag to go with my bigger coats and this is just absolutely stunning it's everything I want in a bag in a way um, the lambskin has worn beautifully obviously I don't abuse it but it's just I'm just so happy that I got it and that I am finally using it um, do I see any wear and tear don't think I do for someone who is really into mini bags such as myself I really appreciate having a bag that is slightly bigger especially in the winter and especially during the pandemic I feel like Yes, I've been trying to take less with me when I go out, but I still need to take my minimum, right? Which includes keys, wallet, sanitizer, you know the drill. And a lot of times the mini bags is harder to fit a sanitizer unless it goes sideways, which is not always the best, especially when it's liquidy, you don't want anything to spill out. It hasn't happened, of course, but with this bag, I can just stand it up, which is perfect which is why I've been loving this bag so much so those of you who are on the fence about the trendy but you just really 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 love it and you want one just go for it just do it so last but not least I wanted to also recommend one of my all-time favorite show that I 
finished so quickly. I'm actually kind of sad that I finished it so fast because I could not stop watching it. Of course, it has to be a Korean show. I do watch a lot of shows, but this one I just really need to shout out because it was so good. And I don't know why I haven't seen it before because it's a 2019 production, Arthal Chronicles. Ugh. First of all, the actors, amazing. Just a beautiful cast of very well-known actors. I don't know them by name, but I just recognize their faces. I just see them very often in different shows. The story is just fantastic. Um, so yes, I have finished season one. I think season two is in production. Kind of like a fantasy show that um, happens in a um, made-up world called Arthol. Uh, but anyway, it's just the concept, everything, the story, everything's so, so, so good. You just have to see it if you're into uh, K-drama, but it's not your typical just K-drama love story. It's not like that. It's just so good. Very well developed and written. Um, if I had to compare it, it would be kind of a cross between Game of Thrones and Vikings. Let me know what are some of your favorites lately and uh, let me know if you have any questions about my fine jewelry. Um, of course, everything that I mentioned, I will be linking down below. If you're new to my channel and you love this video or if you love my content in general, luxury and fashion, definitely consider subscribing and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye. Thank you.